Hello? Hello? Is anybody there? Are we ready for a roast? I sure hope we are. Also, joke's on you, because I'm not even using this mic. I'm using the other one, but hello, and welcome to the 2022 Mel Reed's Bookshelf Roast. I'm also missing one element. I just still don't know why I'm holding this, but I'm missing one element before I get to say hello. Hello, friends. Welcome back, or welcome if you're new. My name is Mel, and today I bring you guys a good old bookshelf roasting video. <laughs> this would come in handy someday. I knew I was keeping it for a reason. If you are not familiar with the concept of a bookshelf roast, several people have done them in the past. Daniel Green has originated this concept, if I'm not mistaken. And then Make for Make with Books has also done this. And every time I've asked you guys what videos you'd like to see on the channel, this one always comes up. Mel, please roast my bookshelf like Daniel Green. Mel, please roast my bookshelf. And I don't know what that says about your attention-seeking skills or your potential narcissistic ability, but I am here today to roast your bookshelves. So yes, friends, I have asked you on the Twitters, which I barely use, but I've asked you on the Twitters, I've asked you on the Instagram, I've asked my Patreons on Discord to send pictures of their bookshelves. We've got some nice coffee, we're about to roast you all, and speaking of roasts, I do need to thank the sponsor of today's video, just straight coffee. Much like myself, I'm sure some of you guys will be able to relate about drinking stale, dull coffee that is questionably sourced, and that's where trade coffee comes in to make your life just a tiny little bit easier when selecting your roast. And essentially, Trade Coffee sells the freshest roasted and most ethically sourced beans from America's local roasters. Best local roasters at that. You can get a whole bean or ground beans and they will always ship free to you. Regardless of your personal coffee taste from instant coffee all the way to the latest exclusive geisha, their real coffee experts taste over 500 roasts and use technology to match you to your ideal coffee roast based on your taste preference and your brewing method. I've literally been in love with this particular roast from Brazil. I've literally been having it every single morning and I'm not even kidding you guys. Like the bag is like almost empty. Like I have barely just a little bit left for maybe one more brew. I'm also a whole bean kind of girl myself because I absolutely love waking up in the morning and grounding my own beans by hand. I know seems like a hassle but honestly when you pair that with your morning routine and you brew your own coffee and then you make your own experience at home. It's literally on mats. Their subscription also comes with no hassle meaning that you can skip, change your frequency, or cancel at any time. And to top it all off, right now Trade Coffee is offering a total of $20 off your first three bags if you go to my link, drinktrade.com slash melreads, or just click the link in the description below. That's up to 16 cups of coffee for free. To get started, take their quiz at drinktrade.com slash melreads and start your journey at your perfect cup. That's drinktrade.com slash melreads for $20 off your first three bags. And without further ado, let's get into Judgment Day. All right, let's get started into roasting your bookshelves. You asked for this. I am going to step into my full moderator role in this. I will pretend I am part of a debate right now and I will fully get into character and into role. And if you don't like it, you asked for it. So you kind of have to stick around. And we're gonna start off with Brooke, I suppose, not by choice, but because she's first. And she says, featuring creepy dolls, which indeed are creepy, but I don't know which ones you speak of. I don't know if you speak of the small devil on your shelf, also known as Funko Pops, which much like Daniel and Meg are also my arch nemesis. I don't know what you guys have told yourselves to fool yourselves and dilute yourselves into believing that these are actually collectible and worth any sort of money, but a lot of you seem to have them on your bookshelves and I suppose I love this for you, but when those wake up in the middle of the night to murder you, don't say I didn't tell you. So I don't know if you mean those or if you mean the baby brats, I'll suppose these are, that you have also at the top of your bookshelf, which lead me to believe that you really do have some sort of death wish featuring your creepy dolls, there's just something about your shelves that screams, I am more concerned with having pretty editions than actually reading. I see you have several editions of Kingdom of the Wicked and Kingdom of the Curse, which is just a choice in and out of itself, but I just don't know what to tell you. See, everything was fine up until I saw how many editions you had of that series, and now I'm kind of disappointed. You also have Sarah Demas on your shelves, you've got a pretty edition of Ariadne. How will I rate you, Brooke? Oh, to make make things worse, you have a hunt 
Funko Pop, you have my other arch nemesis on your shelf. And that is just thoroughly unacceptable. See, I was gonna walk past this one up until I saw the words be nice paired with a million Funko Pops. So introverted reader, you are next and I am calling you out by name because why do we insist on having Funko Pops on your bookshelves like this? And worst of all, you still have them on the box, which means that you're probably deluding yourself into thinking that these will be worth hundreds if not thousands of dollars 10 years from now let me tell you. The answer is probably they won't be. I am also ashamed because you are single-handedly covering the most coveted special editions that I've seen in a while, which are the Strange the Dreamer duology. First edition hardcover print from the UK, and you dare hide those with a Funko Pop. Every person who's searching for these on the internet and will actually give them love is absolutely screeching, and I don't even know what sentence to pass on to you. I'm just disappointed. I'm gonna give you a C minus. Potential, but we're not there. Next Next is Charlotte, who thinks that her toxic trait is thinking that she can stomach my roast. Now I feel extra pressure to roast your shelves, Charlotte, to see if you can actually stomach it. So we've got a bowl on top of your bookshelf, which I don't know what it's doing up there. If it's a plant, I'll assume that it's absolutely dead. If it's not a plant, I'm concerned as to why it's hiding up there. How did it even get up there in the first place is my question, because clearly you have a knack for organizing. And so what's that bowl, Charlotte? Why do we have up there? These bookshelves make me think that you have something to hide, Charlotte, because you are proudly displaying We Were Liars on a stack of books, and that is a special edition of We Were Liars, if I'm not mistaken. But you have not one, not two, but three books turned around so that I can only see the papers. Why can't I see the titles? What are you hiding, Charlotte? Also, the absolute blasphemy of you having A Discovery of Witches and Shadow of Night just chucked up there when you have things like We Were Liars proudly displayed on your bookshelves that something about you that I don't know if I want to get quite into on video format. And also, maybe your toxic trait is that you could potentially have commitment issues because you own Jade City and Jade War, but you don't own Jade Legacy, which is the best out of the trilogy, Charlotte. And that really makes me think, makes me wonder, have you even read Jade City? Because if you haven't, my sentence to you is to read the whole trilogy and then potentially you'd redeem yourself. Overall, the shelves are like a C-. minus. Next up, we have Gavin, who has requested special treat for being my husband. Unfortunately, I cannot deliver on that because I am, if anything, fair to the people. And if I'm judging, I'm judging. And the first thing I am judging is also what Jess pointed out, which is apparently either a massive butt plug or a dildo, which either way, quite impressive that you have that displayed so proudly on your bookshelves. At the very least, you know that opposite to Charlotte, Gavin actually pulls through and he actually doesn't have commitment issues because he is, if anything, a completionist. He actually finishes a series, he makes four hour long videos. He also has a frost art shrine, which I still don't understand why. For everybody who's looking for a special edition from Waterstones of the frost art trilogy or the series, because I still am not quite sure what it's supposed to be. Uh, I'm pretty sure Gavin has them all in his household. If you want to blame anybody for them being sold out, it's probably him. And then you have a classics shelf, which leads me to believe that you'd like to be pretentious, yet you're not. And then you've got these shelves right beneath your dildo, which, you know, you have some really pretty special editions, which I have to give you props for. We got some SJM. We've got the Poppy War Trilogy, which I'll assume you still haven't read, and this is me personally publicly shaming you for not doing that. And you also have an entire shelf dedicated to not only special editions of the Greenbone Saga, but regular editions. Yet, however, you still have the tray from Illumicrate in its box, and you haven't bothered to take it out, so that's one point off to you. Overall, this is a really impressive library room, I'm not gonna lie. Kinda jealous of some of your editions, very impressive. The way you've organized them is also quite impressive, but I can't look past the dildo, so I'm giving you a B. Next up, we have Lilo, who claims it's a bit small, but I think it's okay. And I'm still trying to wonder what part of this is okay, Lilo. Are you just gonna pretend that you don't have Mario and the Ninja Turtle kidnapped on your bookshelf? Because they're very clearly trying to flee. One of them looks happy, which makes me think it's developed Stockholm Syndrome. Mind you, two of them, actually three of them, are smiling, which is quite concerning because I don't exactly know what they're happy about when they clearly are being held hostage. And then Mario is just hanging out with dear life with a Pinocchio nose, which looks more of like a small penis, which I'm still very confused at. I see that you read in Spanish, which means that you're potentially Latin. So it makes my soul want to go a little bit. But you also have a cowboy's football? Lilo, I'm confused. You're either proudly displaying books in Spanish because you want people to think that you're more of an intellectual than you actually are, or you're just confusing me. There's so much happening here. 
I will give you a D for do not hold people hostage. Then we have Chloe, who clearly has a really aesthetically pleasing bookshelf, except for the fact that she also has not only two creepy dolls, but also Funko Pops. Why do you have them proudly displayed on your bookshelf? I will assume that these have some sort of sentimental value, which if they do, honestly, props to you for being that willing to display them like that. But honestly, those dolls are creepy. And I don't know if anybody else has said that to you, but if not, let me be the first. You also have a sword, but how cool would it be if you actually hung that on your wall? That would be quite cool. You also have a TBR dart, which makes me think you're a little bit of a completionist. However, you're just ruining this with the Funko Pops. Why are they still on their boxes? So I'm gonna rate these bookshelves a C because they're pretty, they've got something going for them, but I'm sure there are some other knackets that you can find. Aja, don't mind the book on the floor. I was cleaning the shelves off from dust and you couldn't bother to put the book back in, but you also have a dead flower on your bookshelf, so I really don't know what to tell you. But I also admire your commitment to Twilight and the fact that you still have your paperback movie tie-in branded with your name to make sure that nobody steals it with a smiley face. So that makes me, you have two editions of the Spanish Love Deception? Why? I think the most impressive thing in this bookshelf is the fact that you do have that movie tie-in still and you're proudly displaying that. Did you want me to see that? Did you purposefully plant that on there? Because if you did, it's only more shameful that you left pumpkin heads on the floor. Here's my thing, Aja. You are cleaning from dust, which makes me think that you were organizing your bookshelves. And if you did, you still have cemetery boys just kind of put on top of the hardcovers there with absolutely no effort. You've got two copies of the Spanish Love Deception that I'm still trying to understand why, not with the romance stack that is about, I wanna say, two inches away from it. And then you also have more romances right on top of Ugly Love, which that stack could also go elsewhere, perhaps on top of Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. And yet we are not doing any of it. I am giving you a D. We need to throw that flower away and put the books where they belong and probably also give one of those Spanish love deception copies away. My camera ran out of battery and that's my toxic trait, so let's just move on to the next one. What is happening here? There is so much happening. Ashley hasn't even bothered to make sure that these are vertically organized. However, they are all horizontally organized in book stacks. There's too many Funko Pops and it kind of hurts to look at. I say that with love. Oh my god, I'm sure there's some other way best to organize this. I sentence you to hire a professional to organize your bookshelves. Thank you. Can't believe I'm posting this mess, but go ahead and rose this one. And here's the thing, they're not necessarily messy. You just have your dirty laundry hanging in there. You have two random boxes in there, probably another laundry bag to your right, and it's just a little bit confusing. You also have a teapot. Also very confusing. In general, if you take your dirty laundry off your shelf if you take off the boxes if you actually also just organize the area around it and actually puts that water pot on the kitchen where it belongs these are actually not that bad it's a solid C if you just take off the random stuff that's on there it's not that messy you've just chosen to make it messy Samira my darling I absolutely love Samira on Instagram she sent in her bookshelves and these are actually quite impressive they're really beautiful we've got some nice series on here I see we've got the Poppy War special editions you're just flaunting those on my face because I didn't get around to getting them, but that's fine. You have some nice little records. You've got pictures. You've got perfume bottles. You have a statue, which leads me to believe that you're slightly pretentious, but you try and hide it by reading romance books, probably. And then you have a million candles and just Aquatar merch, which I slightly have to stand because I actually do love the series. Oh, is this your redemption? You have one moment proudly displayed on your bookshelves, unused, which means that you're collecting that, which means that you're a directioner. If you were a Liam girl, we're gonna have a problem. If, it, if you're a sane girl, it's just pain. I typically don't love the whole displaying of sprayed stenciled edges, but I think it works because you have it all sectioned off in a single area. I think it's quite smart on your end. And I think these are solid shelves, except I didn't know there was more. <laughs> I was gonna give you a solid A, but then I saw this and this just 
really makes me think that you try really hard on one end and then you just shove the chaos elsewhere so that people can't really see it. You've got storage bins on your bookshelf and see, here's my thing, Samira. You wouldn't have to stack these books on top of the other if you actually took that storage bin out because not only do you have one of those smack down the middle of your bookshelf, but then the whole bottom shelf is filled with those, which I can slightly appreciate the fact that you're organized. I love that for you. But also, you would have so much more space if you didn't do that. I'm sure you can organize those things elsewhere. I am going to give you a solid B. If you hadn't sent that third shelf, Samira, we would be an A+. Let's move over to another platform so that I don't burn everything through Twitter and let's see what other places have to say. Let's go on to my Patreon Discord and see what people sent in because a lot of people sent their bookshelves and I feel like the Citadel also deserves to be judged. Let's see what we have here. We first have Christina who made sure to send her picture when her dog was on the frame. And if you thought that was gonna sway me and give you a better rating, you are correct because that is one cute dog. Beside that, I see you have Skyward Flight. I am slightly judging you for having completely different editions for Skyward Starsight and Cytonic, but I do commend you for buying Skyward Flight in physical form. I do, I do acknowledge that. You have a lot of books that I like. You have the entirety of the Stormlight Archive. You also have Mistborn Era 1. Then you also have things like Robin Hobb. You've got SJM. You have the Discovery of Witches, which I approve of. But then you have what looks like a maybe stolen library book on top of your bookshelf, and you bothered to save the box for the Mistborn trilogy, but you shoved it up there, which you clearly did bother to keep the Lord of the Rings box set on your last shelf. And what even is the book that you have up here? Winter Heart. Whoever the author is for this, clearly Christina did not enjoy that very much. However, this is a solid collection, could use a little bit better organizing. A lot of the books are kind of tilting and there seems to be a lack of attention somewhat to the organizing. However, I do appreciate that they're mix and matched. It is kind of a vibe. It definitely feels like a home library. We've got Nani, my Latina queen. Hello, Nani. Hello. I'm definitely judging you based on the clear art collection that you have on your bottom shelf, which makes me think that you definitely don't want to be like other girls, but I bet you that you haven't read them. You've got Fotografía, Toda la Historia, Diseño, Toda la Historia. You have a book about the Louvre. You've got the Vatican. You've got Florence, the painting and frescoes, and I bet you have not read any of them, which for aesthetics, it's nice to have, but at the same time, what are you trying to do? You have a nice manga collection, which I can definitely appreciate. You also have a whole Star Wars shelf, which honestly, the first one that we've seen in this video, and I have to say, applause to you. But also, if you have any recommendations on where I should start with Star Wars books, please do let a girl know because these look absolutely stunning and I'd like to build my own collection, if I'm being honest. Definitely a bit jealous of those. You have this whole little aesthetic moment on the left-hand side, which is penguin books of what kind? I'm not sure, but it makes a little rainbow moment and they are quite pretty. Overall, nicely organized, but with some chaos. I'm gonna give you a C+. Then we've got Ronnie, which I love your shelves. There's not a lot to say about your shelves. If I had to rate them, I'd probably give them an A. Like, they're a solid A, A+. Plus. I think the collection is quite nice. We've got some of my favorite books in there. But then we've got your TBR card, which I'm definitely judging, because while I appreciate the way that you've organized your bookshelves and that they're only bookshelves, and you clearly bothered to section off your documents on the left-hand side, which a lot of people have not bothered to know, I quite appreciate that. But then we step into your TBR card. And here's where we didn't bother as much to make sure that these were sectioned off. We've got pencil cases and wallets and purses. We've got notes in the bottom shelf. And we also have a red solo cup, which I am still trying to comprehend. Maybe we just had a really great drunken night and then we washed the red solo cup, which I hope it's washed, and we just put it in there for convenience's sake. I'm still wondering the story of the red solo cup. If it's got a story that you can share, please do let a girl know. But you know what? At least they're well ventilated. We also have Zoe, who says that her bookshelves are very bad. And these are bad by choice, Zoe, because you You've got a wonderful collection here. You've got some really pretty books. You've got a really nice aesthetic pastel romance section. You've got plenty 
of pretty books in your collection. However, what is happening with this stack moment in the midst of your bookshelves? It just seems like you've bought books or started books and you just started shoving them in your bookshelf and you have plenty of space to organize them. I'm sure half the people that are featured in this video would kill to have the amount of space that you have shelf-wise. And yet here we are, not even bothering to organize them. I'm inclined to give you a C if only because everything else is organized. You clearly have a nice collection of books. Oh, you have Fifty Shades of Grey. But then we step into your TBR shelf, which clearly also you aren't taking a lot of care of. Not only are the books shoved in there, but your plants are dead, Zoe. They're withering away. They're sad and dead. What's happening? This could literally take you 10 minutes to organize, and it could also take you five seconds to take away the dead plant. I'm giving you a D overall. We've got Tails. And Tails, you've got a really nice collection. I like that they're sectioned off by shelf. It's nice. I'm personally not that into the rainbow moment anymore. How Ever, however, you also scream, I don't want to be like other girls. Why are these books tilted to the side? You clearly have the space to make sure that they're a little bit straighter in the way that they're organized. However, the bell jar is facing this way, and then whatever the other book is facing this way, and it's just slightly confusing. It just makes me think that you just don't want to be like everybody else, even though your bookshelves are organized in a rainbow format, which is what everybody else does. And why? is this woven kingdom turned that way. If you want to have a nice little shelf displaying your edges, you have more than enough books to do that with. However, don't just do that with one book. It's weird. I don't like it. I am giving you a C minus because overall the shelves have a lot of potential, but the way that they're organized, you also, you caught off this picture, the bottom two shelves, which makes me think that you also have something to hide. And I don't like that. I feel like you're lying to me some way, somehow. The Hunger Games is haphazardly thrown down there and I don't understand why. Are you shaming the dystopian era of literature? Did you not like it? I am giving your shelves a C minus and I'm sentencing you to be on the next Hunger Games. Let them do with you what they want to do with you. May the odds be ever in your favor. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. What am I going to do with you? First, we have your college degree just slightly towards the left, which makes me kind of feel like you're calling me out for not going to college, which all things granted, I suppose I didn't. Then we have these penguins for Christmas. And I don't know if anybody's told you this yet, but uh, not Christmas anymore, Jordan. So we can take those off the bookshelf. And then also, Jordan, we need to take out the trash because all of these Illumicrate boxes, Fairloot boxes, they're open on the floor and they, uh, they've they got nothing in there. And overall, more Funko Pops. You do have Game of Thrones ones, which, uh, uh, slightly more acceptable than the rest, but I still don't like Funko Pops. You tried, you tried, you tried to do something there with me and uh, it slightly worked, but then it didn't. Is this underwear on the pole on top of your bookshelf? If it is, please take it down. If it's not underwear, what is it? And why is it up there? Let's give you a D. We've got Lizzie. I'm afraid to sentence you to anything because I don't know if you're going to see the light of day to actually live off that sentence because I feel like these Funko Pops are one day going to wake up and murder you too. I, this is too much. This is too much. And the worst thing is that you clearly don't even care for them because they're just thrown on there. And here's my thing too. How are you going to get books off your books? shelf to actually read them when you have to move them. You also have a devil on your bookshelf, which I'm sure Sparky, the devil, I don't even know what Sparky is for or what team he's from. However, uh, I think he is equally as in suffering as I am. He's trying to smile through the pain, much like I am watching all of these Funko Pops. I am also very much judging you because you not only have the selection in a box set, which definitely was bought after the box set came out. I'm slightly judging you for that too. And uh, you still have beautiful creatures. I thought we'd collectively decided that both the selection and beautiful creatures are not good series, but I am glad you're owning your truth and I am glad you're living your dream. I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna leave you wondering, that is gonna be part of your sentencing. I'm gonna leave you wondering what I would have rated these shelves if only these Funko Pops weren't there. Next up, we have Alejandra, who honestly, 
honestly, I have zero to no qualms with your bookshelf. I feel like you've got a nice collection. You've got a little bit of everything. You've got the contemporaries. You've got the fantasy. You've got the horror. Then you've got things that are personal to you. You've got a little paw print. You have Let's Love Glow. A little bit cheesy, but you do have some flowers. The fairy lights are a little bit messy. It could do without them. But overall, I kind of like this. I don't think anything is particularly jumping out at me. But I feel like we have some books in common. You have Daisy Jones and the Six. I did see that. But overall, nice shelf. It doesn't bother me too much. I'd say it's a solid B. The only thing you have to fix, girly, is them lights. If you fix those lights, or take them off completely, it'll be a game changer. We've got Sid, who at first was very reluctant to send in her bookshelf. And I can see why, because this is not a bookshelf. I feel like I'm on an episode of Pawn Stars. I feel like you're about to take all of those annotated books to like Chumley and be like, how much can you give me for them? This is absolute massive chaos. I feel like I'm at the back of a bookstore, which, Props to you for having these many books, Sid. But also, I'm sure with the amount of wall space we had in this household, we could have drilled more floating shelves. It's not that hard. With the way that you and Mr. Caleb, Claudio, y'all are so crafty, I'm sure we could have done something more with this. But at this point, this is just lazy and chaotic. There's so much happening. There's so many books. Why do you keep buying books if you know you don't have the space? The worst thing is that you can't even get through all of these books fast enough to justify the way that you're buying them and you have them like this. And my thing is, I don't know what's scarier or impressive. You have a blanket on your chair, which means that you either threw it there very carelessly, which with this scenario, wouldn't be that surprised that or you actually sit in that chair. To do what? I'm unsure because there's not a lot of space to do anything really in this studio. I want to give you a solid F, but I also want to give you an A plus for being able to tolerate this because I feel like I'd go properly insane. Like literally, this feels like OCD torture machine 3000. Like that's what this feels like. I'm just gonna click out to something that doesn't look that much better. Lucy, I feel like you're giving Sydney a run for her money. I feel like Lucy walked into Sydney's room, she saw it, and she said, oh bitch, you got one coming. Because this is even worse. I feel like you drank the entire bottle of Jack Daniels, and this was the result of that. You, Lucy, Lucy, you've got so much space. And for what? You just threw everything on there. You have trash on your bookshelf that you need to take out. You've got books facing out? Why? Why have you not bothered? I feel like there's a dead animal somewhere in there. I feel like you're hiding something from me. I feel like all of these books are like torture books somehow or like murder books, like how-to books to do very just bad stuff and you're trying to appear nice to the world. Wicked Fox facing out and some romance books facing out. What are you hiding from the world that you have so many books turned backwards? I need to understand. See, this bookshelf is not representing any peaceful energy. So Buddha over there is quaking in his boots and uh, I don't know what to tell you, but that peaceful energy that you're trying to draw onto your room is virtually non-existent. If the other one is OCD Torture Machine 3000, this is like 3500. I genuinely don't know what's happening here. And honestly, I'm sure Sid wishes she had these shelves to somewhat organize her life. And yet, you don't even take advantage of them, Lucy. I'm giving you an F. We've got Monica. I first need to talk you through the decision of you messaging me and allowing me to roast your bookshelves. And the first picture you sent me is just a stack of four books. That is not a bookshelf. Then I used to go into your bookshelves and you are clearly a high fantasy girl. You have the entirety of the Wheel of Time and the pretty covers. You've got some Sanderson actual leather bound editions, which are pretty pricey. You've got some of Stormlight. You have Elantris. You've got Mistborn. You've got the entirety of the Witcher series. You know, I feel like this is a solid collection. You only have book one of the Poppy War, which is essentially a crime, but I'll forgive that if you get the other two. And then I go into your other bookshelf, and I don't know what's more offensive to me. The fact that you have the entirety of the Shadow and Bone trilogy, or that because of that reason, you probably don't own the entirety of the Poppy War. That is a conversation for another time. Part of me just wants to ignore this third shelf because we were good with the other two. 
two, even though the other two are literally about to collapse. Uh, I'm gonna give you a C minus, Monica. And to this, I don't even know what to say to this. I feel like I've walked into my own personalized hell. I feel like if when I die, hell is where I go to, it would somewhat look like this. Just Funko Pops everywhere. The fact that you've bothered to make shelves for your Funkos is honestly an amount of dedication that I have to admire, but also why? And the worst thing is that you probably have most of these, if not all of these, still on their boxes. Which again, you guys are just deluded yourselves into believing that these are worth more than they actually are, or that they will eventually. You also have the selection, which I think, again, collectively we decided that we didn't love those. Got Shatter Me, you've got Cassandra Clare. I see you've got completed series, which honestly, oh, you also have a lot of lightsabers. Okay, this is a lot to look at. I don't know why your TV is like smack down the middle, but I will also assume it's to save space. I'm gonna give you a D just because I can't look past the Funkos. I feel I should be paying attention to the books. I mean, I should, it is a bookshelf roast. And instead, the only thing I can look at is the wall of hell. And that is it for today, you guys. That is all of the time that I have to roast y'all's bookshelves. I've been sitting here for too long roasting too many bookshelves and editing this is going to be quite a ride that I am very excited to go on. And so I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up down below and let me know if you'd like a part two of roasting. I have plenty of other ideas for roasts that don't necessarily involve bookshelves. So let a girl know if you'd like to see some of those. And if you have any particular suggestions on what I should roast next, also let a girl know. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. I am constantly uploading videos that I am sure you do not want to miss. And if you want to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon that is always linked down below alongside all of my social medias. Thank you so much to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to head on over to their website, drinktrade.com slash Reads. That way you can get a total of $20 off your first three bags, which is up to 16 cups of coffee for free. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed a good roasting moment and I shall see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.